Bradley was knighted just before the second test of the 1990 series against England. He celebrated by scoring 86 from 84 balls. It is a splendid innings in what's probably his last appearance with the bat on this ground. To be recognised um, in cricket that way, uh, along with a number of other cricketers, is a tremendous uh, accolade, something I respect and appreciate. And um, it's not the type of thing actually you, you work towards. It's, it's when other people want to recognise the contribution you've made to sports, specifically cricket, that uh, that's something that I really admire. I suppose traditionally uh, it was the batsman that uh, received that honour, but uh, being the first bowler, and there's the old classic line, isn't it, that I was what the first bowler to be knighted since the Francis Drake, but uh, you know, pretty uh, pretty common sort of saying. But yeah, it, it's it's rare and a great privilege. In his final Test match later in the series against England, Hadley took his 36th five-wicket haul, including two wickets in his last over. OBW. And will that be a wicket for Richard Hadley with his last ball in Test cricket? To join a very select group of players who have done that. He left the game universally recognised as New Zealand's greatest ever cricketer, and he remains one of that country's national sporting icons. In our country, uh, we like to have our, our heroes, and the media actually promote uh, the heroes. Uh, and I guess you get involved in certain things. You, you get asked to speak at functions, you're asked to promote a product and be involved in charities, which is all a tremendous compliment. That's it. That's it. Richard Hadley has his 100th bag of five in first class cricket, his 35th bag of five in test cricket. I believe that, that nations uh, need to have their heroes, people that uh, can look up to and admire and respect that particular person for what they've achieved, and uh, they become good role models. Sir Richard Hadley played in 86 test matches. He took 431 wickets at an average of 22.3. He took five wickets in an innings on 36 occasions. He took 10 wickets in a match nine times. Hadley made 3,124 test runs at an average of 27.16, including two centuries. He completed 39 catches. In one-day internationals, Hadley took 158 wickets at 21.56 and made 1,751 runs at 21.61. Quite frankly, I think as a pace bowler, you've got to be a special breed. And you've got to take the knocks. Sometimes the body hurts and you've got to keep uh, bowling with niggling injuries. But boy, the rewards can be great if you can get bags of five wickets or ten wickets in a match and change the course of the match. Uh, you take a lot of uh, accolades that go with it. The spearhead, like he, he knew when to bowl at the best times with the new ball just before lunch, second new ball. He knew when to bowl when it was really average times. He, he wasn't on and he didn't have to bowl because he'd already done the damage. Um, I learnt more things off Richard Hadley than I did off any bowler. And he attacked every facet of my game. He was brilliant at it. Oh, gee, I wish he didn't play for New Zealand. I would have made some runs against that. But uh, He didn't sledge, didn't have to because I was out in three balls. He was good, very good. And they knighted him. Yeah, and he deserved it. He varied his pace well. Like every, every great bowler, he was, he kept fit, he, he never, never injured, you know, and he was always bowling. And he had to do a huge amount of bowling for New Zealand. Um, and um, he, he shouldered the burden really well. Um, so you would say, you know, that he, he was another one of those great cricketers. When he first started, he was, he was pretty quick and aggressive and, and like a lot of fast bowlers start, a little bit all over the place. But then he refined his, his skill and his technique to a, to a very precise level, which ended up in him being a formidable opponent and, and, and very skillful, very intense, uh, studied the game, studied the opposition, really focused on the goals that he wanted to achieve and in the end achieved them. When you enjoy the game, you love the game and the team is starting to have success and there are personal successes and particularly with new players and young players coming into the environment that you want to assist them and you want to pass on knowledge and uh, because the game is greater than the individual. Uh, the game will always go on when you're long gone yourself 
as a player and um, so we've got to preserve, in the words of Bradman, uh, the traditions and values of the game and I've never forgotten what he said that, um, you know, everyone is a custodian of the game. It's up to each player, it's up to the media, it's up to the administrators to preserve the traditions, the values, the heritage of the game and play it in its fair spirit. Be competitive, go out there to win, of course, but, um, but do it the right way. No player has mastered the craft of pace bowling more completely. He was at his best right to the last ball of his career. For match after match, season after season, he carried New Zealand to victories against much stronger opposition. Sir Richard Hadley was one of the greatest fast bowlers of his time and one of the best all-rounders of his era. His place is beyond dispute as one of ESPN's legends of cricket.